entertainment page. My name is Richard Jensen. I have a very special guest today, uh, a man who's considered the actor's actor by many in uh, the uh, motion picture and television profession. His name is Max von Sydow. He is currently starring in Flash Gordon. He's playing Ming the Merciless. Does a bang-up job of it. It's a great movie. Go see it. We've got some clips for you that we're going to show you and discuss those with him. As far as current events are concerned, uh, I guess the most uh, newsworthy thing happening right now is, of course, they cremated John Lennon in New York. And uh, Yoko Ono has announced that she would like everyone to maintain a silent vigil on Sunday in his memory. Uh, Grace Slick, the former lead vocalist for the rock group St Jefferson Starship, has announced she wants to do movies. She wants to play Darth Vader's wife in the upcoming Star Wars sequel. So that ought to be, I think, interesting. Uh, Greta Garbo is ending her 40-year retirement. She is going to come back. She's Swedish. But yeah. She's uh, coming back to remake the movie The Saga of Gosta Berling, which was the first movie she ever made in 1924. She's been in retirement for 40 years and has rarely been seen since 1941, so that ought to be very interesting. Brooke Shields, since her appearance in the movie Blue Lagoon, has been receiving umpteen thousand fan letters, uh, I, I guess, a week. She is trying to answer all of them, according to a recent news release, and she even makes telephone calls to the more disturbing fans who write her and tell them they're contemplating suicide or that they don't measure up to their parents or whatever. So I guess we should give her a uh, gold star for that and stop jumping all over her for doing Calvin Klein ads. Uh, believe it or not, Chuck Berry, the original rock and roller, is in a time capsule. Not him personally, but in the image of him singing Johnny B. Good is in a time capsule that is hurtling through space right now. And it is supposedly going to be out there for the next 40,000 years. And according to one of the NASA engineers that put this little tape along with some other pieces of American culture in the capsule, he felt that people billions of years, light years away, should be able to see what goes on in a little planet called Earth. So we'll have to ask Ming the Merciless about that. <laughs> We're going to go to a commercial, and we'll be right back with Max von Sydow. We are back with a very special guest, Max von Sydow, who is here in town promoting his new motion picture, Flash Gordon. Welcome. Thank you. You had a nice trip in, so. Yes. Good. Now, this you were telling me was your first promotional tour? Yes, it is. I have, of course, uh, done a lot of interviews uh, connected with, uh, say, uh, opening nights, mm -hmm. both in, well, New York and Los Angeles, but I've never been traveling like this before. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the first time. It's interesting. It's Are you a homebody or do you like to travel? I have been forced to travel because of my work. Mm -hmm. And uh, this last year has been a very, very <laughs> busy year. The man with the suitcase, right? right? Yes. <laughs> I've been living in a suitcase now for months, more or less. But, but uh, it's been nice. Having traveled so much, what is the most out-of-the-way, exotic, or different place you've been to to film a movie? I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Bora Bora, where we shot Hurricane a couple of years ago mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the South Seas. With Mia Farrow. And With Mia Farrow yes. and, and uh, Trevor Howard and Jason Robards, mm -hmm. among others. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite role? Uh, what do you mean? That I have That done? you have played. That, that I have played. Something that sticks in your mind and you go, ah, that was good. Well, that was good, yes. I think I have quite a few. I was in something called The Emigrants on the New Land mm -hmm. about ten years ago, which uh, was a wonderful story, a wonderful part, and I enjoy doing it very much, and I like these two films very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
then I, my very first American picture, which was called The Greatest Story Ever Told, which mm -hmm. was based on the life of Christ, mm -hmm. was a very, very extraordinary experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you saw something called, a very good thriller called uh, Three Days of the Condor. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. I played a, an interesting villain Joubert. in that one. Yes, mm -hmm. Joubert, you mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. A friend of mine has a videotape of this, and I think he watches it once a week. Uh huh. It's a good. He's picture. a Robert Redford fanatic. Oh, well, he was very good in that one. Yeah. Uh, is Max von Sydow very critical of himself? Does he watch himself on screen and say, "Oh, I should have done that all wrong"? Yes, uh, I want to see my films when I have done them mm -hmm. to check on if what I try to do really came mm -hmm. through. But. Uh, Yes, I'm critical. I think so. Mm -hmm. Do you like to accept roles where you have to go through a lot of makeup, like The Exorcist or Ming? The sometimes, Exorcist? not always. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you get sick and tired of all this. Mm -hmm. But uh, but sometimes, if if it is interesting, like uh, The Exorcist, that mm -hmm. was a challenge because Father Merrin in The Exorcist had to be so many years older than I, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's also uh, and f of course very much because I knew that Dick Smith, the master makeup artist of mm -hmm. New York would uh, do would the, makeup. the makeup. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I knew him. I had met him before. Mm -hmm. That time he didn't have to do that much with my face. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> this time it was just, th uh, it was a pleasure to see how he did all this. Mm -hmm. Is it tough to make a personality show through all that makeup? It you is. You know, the character that you're it, Well, yes, you have to, you have to kind of play up to the makeup. You have to find a way to really uh, be, say, s to synchronize yourself with your makeup, mm -hmm. or, or rather, maybe synchronize your makeup with the way you are going to do it. Mm -hmm. I think. Didn't you? Uh, have you ever tried? I've never done anything in makeup. I never. Generally, just the usual pan and yeah, yeah. under the eyes and yes. go to it. You know, yes, quick yes. television. That's all. <laughs> it's fun. I've done it before. I've done it in other films, but never in all through the film, like mm -hmm. uh, The Exorcist. But mm -hmm. I've been in a couple of films where I have aged from being young in the beginning mm -hmm. to, say, s 65, 70 at the end. But mm -hmm. then it's such a short... It's such a short thing, know. a couple of days' worth of filming. Yes, and that is fun to do. Uh -huh. With Ming the Merciless, now you're a big man, you're tall. There were times when Ming was so oriental almost that yeah. he seemed like so small but so evil. How did you project that? You looked very, you know how the Oriental are short in stature is what I'm saying. Yeah. It almost looked like that was not Max von Sydow up there. It was well, Ming. I don't know. How I do you project something like that? Is it body language or is it just our interpretation of it? I think, I, I didn't really, th I don't think Ming is in, in this version very Oriental. He, he has just, say, inherited uh, the beard, which, well, I shouldn't say this, but it is kind of, it's a, what would you call it? Goatee? Would you Fomentier call it? thing? Uh, oh, yeah. the goatee? Yeah, yeah, would you call it that? Mm -hmm. It's anyway, it is, uh, say, what do you say? It is just long. Yeah. yeah, and they are crooked like this. And I w with this beard, false beard, in the mornings mm -hmm. when I arrived to the makeup uh, chair, hanging on the, maybe hanging close to the mirror or so, <laughs> I always... <laughs> your beard. No, <laughs> no, I always thought of, of frog's legs. <laughs> <laughs> looked like frog's legs. <laughs> so long as nobody walked up to you and ordered yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. were no, okay. No, they never did. Now, um, we have a clip of uh, flat, p a piece of Flash Gordon, the emptying your mind clip. Um, do you want to set this up, or do you just want to let it roll? Uh, well, no, I can tell you what it's about. It, it, uh, it deals with uh, Dr. Zarkov, who is uh, Ming's prisoner. Uh, Ming doesn't want to kill Dr. Zarkov because he thinks that Zarkov is a clever man and uh, he might be able to use him for something. But he doesn't like uh, Zarkov's humanity and noble nature, so he wants to kind of dehumanize him. And uh, for that reason, he puts him through a terrible ordeal. But before this, he gives him a few uh, interesting uh, information. And this is, this is the scene. Okay, roll the clip. What's in Arborea? People who help you. Why? Prince Baron does anything I ask. God, that's Sarkov! It's nothing. They're just conditioning him to our climate. Keep out of sight. Do you want us both killed? Trust me. Every thousand years, 
I test each life system in the universe. I visit it with mysteries, earthquakes, unpredicted eclipses, strange craters in the wilderness. If these are taken as natural, I judge that system ignorant and harmless. I spare it. But if the hand of Ming is recognized in these events, I judge that system dangerous to us. I call upon the great god, Dizan, and for his greater glory, and our mutual pleasure. I destroy it utterly. You're saying it's my fault Earth is being destroyed. Precisely, Doctor. I thought it might amuse you to know this before your mind is gone. Proceed with it. What are you doing to me? Hmm? Oh, we're just emptying your mind. What? We are going to empty your memory, as we might empty your pockets. Doctor. No. Don't do that. Please, I beg you. My mind is all I have. I spent my whole life trying to fill it. Begin. We are back with Max von Sydow, the, uh, one of the stars of uh, Flash Gordon, who plays Ming the Merciless, as you can see in the clip. Do you find it hard living up to the reputation of being such a fine actor? I mean, do you have to struggle to find parts that you feel challenge you, that it will broaden your horizons? Sometimes, yes. Uh, sometimes. What I, what I have difficulties doing is mainly to find parts which are different enough from the things I've done before. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I like diversity. I, I like... I'm, I was brought up in Sweden where we don't have l large audiences, where we mm -hmm. never have long runs in the theaters. So we had to really? do... Really? Yeah, no, very rare. Pictures rarely. don't last very much. Well, the pi no, I'm talking about theater production. Theater? So, mm -hmm. so we had to change our parts all the time, which was mm -hmm. wonderful, particularly when, when, when you are young and want to prove yourself mm -hmm. and, and so learn. being on the firing line. Yes, mm -hmm. and you get good parts and big parts mm -hmm. and very different parts all the time. I started out because I didn't really look like, say, the, the well, the primo amoroso of, of the times. Mm -hmm. I, I started out as a very, very old man, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I played all the old grandfathers for several years mm -hmm. in, in Swedish theater. But that was very good. It was a mm -hmm. good school. Mm -hmm. Although it took me a while when I finally get, wh when I got uh, uh, parts closer to my own age to, to kind of relax from all the uh, old man uh, mm -hmm. mannerisms. What did you play in Katamahat Tim Roof? I played Brick. Did you? That was when I had kind of... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, back to my own age. That, yeah, because I played that here oh, several did you? years ago. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful it's part. It's a hell of a part. Oh, that's All that tea you have to drink to <laughs> you drinking that whiskey. <laughs> yes, did you have to run off stage every uh, time they gave uh, you a break? Uh, it happened. It happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, with the character of Ming, it's not exactly what you would call a deep motion picture. No. There's been a lot of bad publicity about Sam Jones. A lot of the, his arguing with the producers. Uh, yes. How did you find him? Was he easy to work with? Was he a nice? He person? was a very nice person. I'm, I I was very fond of him, and and uh, I liked him very much. I think he he does very well in the picture. He personifies the good young man mm -hmm. very well. I believe that he believes in his cause, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry for the bad publicity he has gotten. I think. Uh, I have a suspicion there. I think people are very, very jealous of him, particularly the male critics. Mm -hmm. But I may be wrong. However, I, I think he deserves better. Mm -hmm. 
Well, he had a tough job trying yes, to, he had. to fill Buster Crab's shoes anyway. Yes, yes. Just the overwhelming publicity of that alone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Working with uh, the technical crews that you had to work with, and most of these uh, space movies, I understand, are shot in England. Oh, the whole thing was shot in England. Yeah, the Supermans are shot in England, and the Star Wars are shot in England. Yes. Is that just because, do you know if that's because of the technical uh, I don't know. I, maybe, probably, because they, I, they are used to this by now. <laughs> they, the, mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, the Empire Strikes Back was shot on the same mm -hmm. studio that where we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe even Superman too. I don't know. I don't know where mm -hmm. Superman, the, the, the first Superman was shot. Mm -hmm. I know it was, most of it was shot in England. Yes. One of the things I wanted to ask you about shooting in England, I noticed that uh, when, the, when a villain or an actor who's playing the villain or one of the characters comes out and speaks with an accent other than an American accent, it kind of almost gives it that feeling of being from somewhere else, which I don't know if it helps it or hurts it, but uh, did you ever notice that? I guess that's the idea. I think that Sam Jones and Melody Anderson are the only two Americans mm -hmm. in our picture. Mm -hmm and all the rest of us are either English, Italian, or Swedish. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that is supposed to be, I don't know what Mongo, Mongo really? what, what, what? Would, would sound like, but, yeah. uh, but uh, that is what we are supposed to speak, I presume. Did you research for me? No, well, I, d uh, I wouldn't call it research. I, I tried to, I, I read a lot of comic books on mm -hmm. Flash Gordon to mm -hmm. find out whether Ming had any particular tricks that he did in certain situations, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really find anything. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen the Buster Crab movies mm -hmm. when I started doing this, mm -hmm. but later on when I saw some of them, I realized that obviously uh, Charles Middleton had certain gestures that he used. Did, mm -hmm. did you see those mm -hmm. serials? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just hope that people who, who did see them uh, will not miss these tricks when they see this picture. I do other things. Mm -hmm. but mm, you do this a lot. Well, it's uh, almost reminiscent of uh, Bogart and the Cane Mutiny that kind of... Well, no. Well, I do something which I... I, I, I my intention is that, or was, that uh, one should get the impress impression that Ming is, is very eager to do something, whatever. Mm -hmm. Some very with, nasty uh, Dale Arden. Well, <laughs> with Dale Arden. Or Drink that magic potion. Yes, <laughs> or, or he is, uh, you know, very anxious to kill or torture someone yes. or whatever. Uh -huh. We have another clip now of uh, the confrontation scene for the first time with Ming uh -huh. and Flash Gordon, pr previous to the football game. I see. Uh, so we're going to go to that right now because we're running short on time. Come along, Fellini. Hey, remember me? Who are you? Flash Gordon, quarterback, New York Jets. Dale Arden, your highness. Live and let live. That's my motto. My name is Hans Zarkov. I'm a scientist. I kidnapped them here in an effort to save our planet Earth. An obscure body in the SK system, the satellite which has been given you so much amusement recently. But why? We are only interested in friendship. Why do you attack us? Why not? Pathetic earthlings. Hurling your bodies out into the void without the slightest inkling of who or what is out here. If you had known anything about the true nature of the universe, anything at all, you would have hidden from it in terror.
We're back, of course, with Max von Sydow. Are you a Renaissance man? What do you mean? I mean, you you prefer to live in Europe. Uh, I yes. You've I done do. quite a number of uh, very classical motion pictures in the sense that they were like the greatest story ever told. It wasn't exactly a detective movie. No. Do you lean towards the more romantic type of uh, life? Maybe yes. I guess I do. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I haven't thought of that, but in a way I do. Uh, regarding parts, I was brought up with, say, old-fashioned, traditional, classic mm -hmm. theatre, and mm -hmm. and maybe that has marked me. I don't know, mm -hmm. but uh, I thoroughly enjoy that. Mm -hmm. The times I've done it, mm -hmm. like say Shakespeare, yeah. and Moliere, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What do you see for yourself in the future? What do you want to do? I would like to do, uh, just for once, some nice, very ordinary people involved in interesting, mm -hmm. uh, say, situations. Mm -hmm. if, instead of doing, for example, this mm -hmm. terrible so villain or, mm -hmm. or uh, some. Uh, instead of playing an extremist, you want yes, to play yes, yeah, yes, yes. someone down the would middle be nice. of the road. Living in Rome and having to travel to places like the United States and to. Um, Bora Bora, Bora and Bora, this yeah. kind of thing. How does it affect your family life? My Is wife usually goes with me, but mm -hmm. of course not always. It depends where I'm going. If, if you know, to to Los Angeles or to s nice, interesting cities, mm -hmm. there's no question she 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 goes with me. But to places way out where there's nothing to do. Uh, she would be very bored to stay mm -hmm. with me without doing anything. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, now my sons, I have two sons, they are 27 and 23 years old. And mm -hmm. uh, now they, of course, are out on their own. But when they were little, I tried to take them along as much as I could, mm -hmm. even if they, even if I had to uh, take them out of school and put them in, in another school somewhere. Mm -hmm. because I felt that it was important for us to stay together. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very good for them because because of that they have spent a lot of time in this country and they speak English because mm -hmm. of this. They're bilingual. Mm -hmm. Totally flu mm -hmm. fluent, fluently. I thank you for joining us. I know I've been personally been very excited about your coming for the past two weeks since we uh, you know, were able to have you down. I appreciate your coming and we look forward to seeing more of you. Thank uh, you, Richard. Hope thank you'll come you. back. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.